please provide our readers with reminds each day of why they dedicated their lives to public service and to use them that committed to encourage them. Give them the peace when they work, take them away from their families and let them lead us all in our community as one. In Jesus' name, we pray for our commissioners, our mayor, and all our citizens. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Breeder, will you lead the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start running because I heard. Yes. Roll call, please. Mayor Cherry. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lewis. Yes. Commissioner Brito. Yes. Commissioner Oglesby. Yes. Commissioner Hales. Here. Uh, approval to the agenda. Any changes? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and move to approve the agenda as presented. I'll second. Motion second. Discussion? Questioning? Roll call. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes, sir. Commissioner Rico? Yes. Commissioner Ogilvy? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Sorry, do we have a comment list? No, I get it. Guys, sorry about that. Get so busy. Thank you. <laughs> Tommy Snap. Uh, we're going to limit 30 seconds tonight. No, no way. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Community. My name is Tommy Snap. I am a member of this community, have been for 53 years, and I have enjoyed every moment of it. But I am very upset with a certain city commissioner, and I demand the immediate and effective resignation of Jerry Lopez for putting this city at harm. It goes against code of conduct. For each and every one of you city councilmen, whenever you demand a resignation or for a police chief to be fired when there is not a chief of police in uh, to stand to take that place, you are in the wrong and you have violated the code of ethics. When you put the city manager in a position that you put the city manager in, you are in violation of the code of ethics for the city commission. Thank you. Ms. Daughtery, and she knows your name, but go ahead and state it for the record, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Daugherty with THRI, the Tupacay Historical Museum. I just wanted to come in tonight and give you all a little bit of information about some things which are going on. And uh, first off, to, to tell you that next week, a week from tonight, we're going to be having the circus in town. So it's the same one that we brought in uh, two years ago. They they loved coming to Tupacare. They said it's one of the best shows they put on during the course of the year with the amount of crowd support they had. So we're looking forward to that happening again. So again, hopefully you all join us there at that. Uh, performances at 5 and 7.30, I believe, is what they are here at Tupacare. So hopefully the weather will be better by then. Uh, now also, to give a little bit of a report on Rawhide Days, we're looking at about 10 weeks until that comes into town. So the third weekend of June is as we run a Rawhide Day. So that's the 14th, 15th, and 16th of June. And it'll be pretty close to the same type of activities that we enjoyed last year. Uh, there are gonna be some minor changes here and there. Uh, but again, the, the gun show was a great success last year. They're coming back. They enjoyed coming to, to the town too. They got a lot of support from our community and they're, they're wanting to, uh, to come back and continue that. Uh, we are looking for assistance. If there's any group or organization that would like to get involved with getting a, a little more uh, 
public exposure for themselves and to help with the community events. If they'd like to contact us at the museum, we'd sure be glad to work with any other groups that are that are in the uh, in the area. Now, to to that, I'd like to say that uh, I understand with uh, you know working with our liaison with the commission that there there is an event that the city is thinking about for a uh, Saturday night with that rawhide day. And that was bringing in some of the the uh, comedians and whatnot, and that it, it impacts a little bit of some of the planning that we had done before. But there's ways we can work this together so it helps out both groups and makes a bigger, better event for us all during the course of the year. So if I have just a couple of, of seconds right here still left of my time, I'll explain what we had been thinking of doing and seeing how that might be able to. Uh, to correlate with some of the plans that the city has made on this type of activity. One thing we've done this year is we've looked into the possibility of bringing in a, a beer garden of sorts to be able to have someone with a picnic license be able to allow us to bring in some brewers from around the state that would be able to bring in samples of some of their wares and whatnot. And that's something that, you know, it's, uh, it, it's not a, a, a bar situation. It's a chance to be able to see, you know, what, uh, you know, what kind of materials out there and what's uh, available, you know, from some of the, the local businesses and uh, brewers from our area. And we were going to be doing that uh, on the Saturday night, which would be the night that apparently has already uh, kind of been penciled in a little bit with the city on being able to have an event at the convention center. It would be easy to merge what we're doing with that event at the convention center. We were planning on being able to have uh, some live music in, be able to uh, have a more of a wine and cheese and food and social and, you know, again, a beer tasting kind of an event. But bringing that into the convention center would work and could be done. And uh, it, it's something we'd like to, to be able to talk with you about on making that kind of a change in the uh, agenda for what we're planning for Rawhide and what y'all are planning with this event that y'all had with your comedians coming in. So, I don't know, you know, just, you know. Go ahead. Uh, give it to the manager. Okay. So, again, uh, you know, that was back to work out. And, you know, as long as we can work out some details so it works out for all of us. And, again, anything that makes it better for the, the citizens and the community of Tupacary, you know, that's what we're working for. And being able to bring more people in and give them more to do and more to enjoy in our town. And it works out great for us all. And if there's any questions that anyone ever has about, you know, rawhides and what's coming up, you know, just please reach out and, and uh, you know, contact us. And if you're willing to be in charge of something, let me know, and we'll sure put you in charge of something as well. Okay, thank you. You know, I'm sorry you're so down on the community, but thank you. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to ask the manager. Uh, Mr. Manager, so Mr. Dorothy wants to bring, I guess, like a was it a wine or a, like a, a beer garden but you know some of these brewers have like a wines and like ciders and beers and whatnot so like that we, we wouldn't need to get a, a picnic license if it's done at the convention center right no not if it's done at the convention center because there's already a license there see that would save us the process of having to have a, a someone else come in with that picnic license but again it'd be something we're going to have to you know negotiate out like uh, you know, like how are we splitting the profits off of the bar and uh, and whatnot, and how are we taking care of all the other expenses? So, I, I agree with the mayor. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miss Olson. Good evening, mayor, commissioners, the manager. I just wanted to come um, and just share with you guys a couple of things. Um, you know, I, um, I want to thank you guys for your past support. You know, the, the chamber has worked really diligently um, to try to keep responding to visitors and tourists who are requesting information from our community. Um, we appreciate your support, your funding that you've given us so that we can do some of the things that we've been able to do. And, um, and you know, that opportunity sometimes often gets missed um, just to say thank you and let you know we appreciate um, what you all do for the community and what you do to support us. Um, I also wanted to say that, you know, the largest tax board has a very big job in dealing out funds to help market and promote our community. 
to help bring tourists, to help improve the tourist experience in our community. And I'm glad that the chamber through our visitor center is able to provide some of that information to the communities and help the tourists and travelers that visit our community. And so, you know, through our, um, through the Lodger Tax Board, we did request some support for the visitor center. Um, you know, it's our goal to try to be open seven days a week. Um, I know most of the travelers that come to our community come here on the weekends. And right now we have a part-time person that's there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday from 11 to 6. And we'd like to be able to continue that position in our office. Um, that way that can be open on the weekends. Um, we are in hopes of hiring a full-time director. Um, we have the funds to do it. And with support from the Rogers Tax, we were hoping that we could have a little bit of additional money to pay that person, have a full-time person. Um, so that person could serve as the visitor center assistant or helping the travelers when the visitor center assistant is gone and to manage the operations of that visitor center for supplies and payroll and all those kinds of things. And that, unfortunately, that wasn't um, approved by the Lodgers Tax Board. So we'll just have to, I, I would like to ask that y'all consider adding that funding to our request as y'all review the request that we've submitted and it's the money for you know operating expenses. We're gonna continue to do what we can um, to support the community, to be here for the travelers um, we'll give them whatever information we have. We are planning to develop a couple extra things that we have whenever we're in a situation like we are now that we've been out of visitor guides, so we can give them dining and lodging information. One of our biggest requested items is the mural map, so we'd really like to work on trying to have uh, better information on the murals to give folks and things like that. So, you know, we're committed to supporting the largest tax board. We're committed to supporting the city. And we just thank you in return for the support that we get in return. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good timing. Right? I know. <laughs> Any place? Hello, Tucumcares Cares uh, City Council. My name is Haley Place, citizens of Tucum Care, New Mexico. And um, I got a new sign. You guys read this sign? Is it on video here? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Stay at your party yeah, yeah. and put your yeah. sign down. Yeah, this is the sign I'm going to be holding up on the freeway entrances if you guys don't do something. So I have a few suggestions you can do. Yesterday I had to wrestle a pit bull in the street. It was after a Japanese tourist. Can you imagine what happens if a Japanese tourist gets bitten by a pit bull or torn up here? You'll get a bad Yelp review, huh? So what we need to do is something. But... We need uh, laws that include written consequences and fines if the pet owners are not compliant. The city council needs to current to review the new current laws on the books and revise where warranted. The city needs to be diligent in issues and citations, collecting fines and maintaining a database and repeat offenders if needed to be listed in Quay County Sun, similar as the uh, PD jail records. City council needs to budget monies, upgrading more space at the ACO and work for with Claws and Claws Rescue better. The bottom line is the pet owners need to accept responsibilities for animals and alter the rules where they're not. We cannot, st you live a block and a half from a dog where a dog almost killed a man. Now, if this dog gets out and gets to the school, now I'm over there regular across from John and Ruth Nichols house. If that dog gets out, he's gonna try to kill me. I guarantee it, he's trying to kill anything he can when he gets out and he will get out again. So why don't we do something about it before I have to come in and say, I told you so. Then real quick, I'd like to say, way to go, fire department. They kicked butt and took names the other day in a bad situation. And uh, I heard the rec center is supposed to be shut down for half the summer. That can't be true. It just can't be true. Uh, I don't believe it's true, and I hope it's not, because I know they're doing a bunch of upgrades, but I heard they're going to be shut down for half the summer because of the upgrades. I just don't know. So what are we going to do? I've been working on getting it put on the agenda. I do have a lot of other people besides me. I could go through, I've got 63 comments when I put a thing on Facebook asking about what happened with your dog bite experience. Did you feel like it was handled well? So there's a lot of fancy pants names in this thing too. So I know the buck stops here, but it doesn't. Somewhere somebody else can help us. Okay, now if I take this sign and stand on the freeway off ramps, I'm gonna make a difference. And I'll put everybody that wasn't bitten or killed by a dog on the off-ramps, 
on the entrance ways to chicken care. I held this up not too long ago, and you won't believe the incredible response I have from the tourists, from the truck drivers, from one young man. If his, when they went by, his son looked at me and he mouthed the words, no fentanyl allowed? His dad had a conversation with him at McDonald's, finding out his 17-year-old son was in Baltimore about to do fentanyl next weekend. They went to San Juan and had the conversation and came back. And the man thanked me. He said, you might think you didn't do any good today, but holding this sign up, had my 12-year-old son ask me what it was about, stopping my 16-year-old son from doing fentanyl. Okay, thank you, sir. You bet. Mr. Place? Yes, sir. Listen, you're welcome to come and do your comments, but we're not going to allow signs. That's my choice. It's kind of a protest, but you're allowed to make your comments. Okay, so I guess we stand outside with signs? Yeah, the police department doesn't mind. Okay, we might stand in front of your house with signs in. Sure. Okay. Mr. Moore? <clears throat> Hi. Hi, I'm Robert Moore, <clears throat> co owner of Relaxing Circle S Motel. My classic trucks. I have a uh, criminal complaint on my trucks that I have to pay a criminal fine for. Here's more movie microphone up just a little bit. Thank you. I have a criminal complaint that was filed against me for my trucks by your bylaws of your code for the code enforcement. My trucks are exempt. My trucks are 75 years old that I have in front of my my motel. They're art. They're for art purposes only to draw attention in for the city for tourism. Not, you know, and to, for people to take pictures out in front of our motel with them and everything. They want me to remove them. I, I'm, that's not going to happen. And I would like the code enforcement to, or the codes to be rewritten on this and something where the judge could actually do something about it but even in your laws with the code enforcement it says that my trucks don't even qualify there's a whole line that says any motor vehicle retained to the owner of an antique collector collection purposes an antique motor vehicle is a collection purposes is any motor vehicle 25 years and older from the date of manufacture of such vehicle and then it goes on from there, which is statute 7 06 060. And it's a nuisance. They say that my trucks are nuisance. They're not a nuisance. And I got people all over the internet and internet posts that tag me. You know, just about every person that knows me that I'm from Sukum Carry that are, you know, in the United States tag me every time something. And I just filed for another business license. That'll be number three business license that I have for businesses in Tucum Carry. You know, if you want me to pull my businesses out and, you know, not pay taxes and everything, I'm more than welcome to do that, you know. And, you know, I don't want to leave Tucum Carry. This is my home. This is my life. I'm trying to make Tucum Carry better. And I'm being pushed out. And I don't really like it. And I've already talked to people you know, about doing another project. And if I do that project, I don't think anybody's going to like it in Tucum Carry. But it's coming to that project. So can they change the law or fix the, or amend the freaking the code law because I'm being harassed by the code enforcement. I had a property. I didn't even buy the property. I, I was thinking about buying the property. And she already told me I needed to clean it up. So they need to talk to the code enforcement officer here to stop targeting me because I'm not happy and she threw all the commissioners under the bus that said she said that you guys are on agreement that we need to take all the classic vehicles off of route 66 and that's how she worded it to me in my shop I have a book here with signatures of every business around my business that they signed they don't want me to move my trucks, and I'm going to keep going. I haven't been to all the businesses in Tucum Carry, but I'm going to go to everyone on Route 66 that's in agreement that hotel owners, pot shops, everything that's on Route 66 that want me to keep my vehicles there because it brings business into them. So you guys are going to lose a lot of tourism if we pull those vehicles off of them. Thank you. Good time and again, there's some more. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I never said that way, like the 
I had it either. Thank you. Consent agenda. Does anybody want to pull anything off the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Mayor, go ahead and move to uh, approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Thank you. Questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Brito? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Ogilvie? Yes. Commissioner <laughs> Chaos? Yes. Mayor Chair? Yes. <laughs> Going on to ordinance 1174, first reading. Any questions, comments? So what we'll be doing on this is uh, voting to allow the clerk to have a census. That's right. Yes. Uh, with that being said, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion to uh, allow the clerk to start advertising for this order. Uh, Thank you. And so just for clarification, for point of clarification, it was um, the version that was presented to you all at the commission at the board session. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Lopez? Yes. Moving on, new business, larger tax funding for FY 2425. Mr. Mayor, I do have one question regarding the water tax. Are we going to do this all at, at one or each individual? Not about it. How do you recommend that? Do you want to do it as it's depending how you guys want it presented? I think we have to go through them individually. I would say. And, and it should be quick. Uh, originally, I was going to pull a couple because of questions. And again, the questions I had was. <clears throat> The application asks if they have a tax exempt, if they're a tax exempt organization, they are, they should have the tax exempt, excuse me, certificate with them. So we had two that did not do that. And so it's been clarified by the city attorney that it's not necessary, lodger tax, it's not considered, I'm assuming something on it, but in his statement, <clears throat> what is it? I can find the letter. Read, read his last comment there, please, Mayor. Okay. He says he would not recommend restricting applicants to only 501c3 organizations. So it's in writing, it's not even going. So that answered my questions. So. <clears throat> We can go down through the list. So basically, all they have to do is provide a tax certificate. You know? what? A tax certificate. Oh, okay. CRS number. Yeah. A tax certificate and also a non exempt if they're not exempt. Okay, that was my question. Why is the question even on there if it's not germane? I can't answer that. Here, right? I don't know. That's, that's something that we can look at if, if we need to be moved out. No, I think so because there was two that fell under that category. Yes. So uh, we'll take the first one, B Crew Softball for a tournament. And this is for the current year. This is not for the new year. Because it's scheduled on June 14th and 15th. So it would come out of this year's. It would come out of fiscal year 24, not fiscal year 25. Yes. So do we, do we approve it with this new year 2025 budget, or should we do this separately and have it approved with this budget? What, what would be easier? If you could just go down in and approve it, just so that you guys know that this is fiscal year 24, it'll come out of this year's funding. So this is the only bit that's going to come out of 2024? Okay. Yes. And this is scheduled to be during the same time as. Is that normal? Is that normal? Is that normal? No, go ahead. I don't think they wanted to have a softball tournament, but they did. Something happened, and so um, Brenda had already put it together. 
and then around line the second one and it's a real So then in the end it will work there. So Madam Manager, are we just approving the promotional side or we're gonna to have to approve executive side too? Is there some executive request and some promotional request? Because the recommendation lodges are doing is just on promotional side. Is that correct? Yeah, they actually make a recommendation to on the executive side oh. too. They it's just a recommendation, it's at the board's decision to make to accept it or not. But they, they have been making the recommendations even on the executive side. We've taken it to Rogers Tax for their opinion and I believe on all of these there's some that we're going to need to look at to determine what's going to be promotional and what's going to be executive correct yes. well, when we come to that but I think it was pretty well clarified in the lodge tax meeting so, but if you have questions we can do that yeah. uh, so you know that I'm pretty sure correct me if I'm wrong says <coughs> that anything on promotional it needs to go through the lodge tax for a recommendation and it, it, the statute doesn't apply to executives, but in the past, we've always, and I think it's a good idea, is that they don't consider executive side also. It doesn't have to go through them, but I think it's good, you've got some good people on here to make that recommendation for the executive. And, and when we get down to the, where they're split, the motion would need to be for both the yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. We've got to state that in the. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I've got a question. Sorry. So, like, I see, like, on the first one, the fees, uh, the baseball tournament. I, I think this is, I'm just asking because I don't know. So, I see that they have promotional items on there, but it's like um, for in print and other businesses that are outside of Tucson Carry. Does the city do anything to give extra? Points or anything for anybody that uses vendors that have a business license within the city of Chicken Carry to use them and to promote business, keeping our money here in Chicken Carry? We, we never have that experience. I know they are doing some of the promotional in town. I was just asking. I, I, I don't know. So, as a manager's standpoint, I always try to encourage to keep money as even at grants or whatever that we try to keep as much as we can if we can locally. Right. There's some things that we can't, but it just helps our community. Okay. I'll just ask you. No, it's that's a good, good idea. That's a good and, idea. And I think, I think it's really a good uh, idea. we can get a hold of the chair of the larger tax. That's something that they probably should consider in the future. Maybe we can put that into the new application. Okay. <laughs> Right. Oh, some he's here. Sure. <laughs> some kind of some kind of incentive to keep them local. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I think that's a good idea. Mayor Kim, should he not be presenting this yet? Oh, I've always thought they presented it, but I don't know. I mean, y'all could do that. Okay, carrying on then. Oh. Uh, for the tournament this year is going to come out of this budget. Uh, One thousand eight hundred eighty-seven dollars twenty-nine cents, and that's all in promotional. Anybody have any questions or comments? I, I, I can tell you that in, in a, it's in their application that their their promotional items would be considered iffy because they're not doing the advertising or anything with the funds, but they're buying the t-shirts and gifts and larger tax statute allows that for promotion and, and excuse me it's on the back of the application uh, that you can do trophies and shirts and stuff um, i'm sorry to interrupt i just no i gave you a chance to come up oh you was in this it was good yeah bow screw uh 1870 okay one thousand eight hundred eighty-seven dollars and twenty-nine cents. Uh, the recommended, uh, the largest board recommended the commission. All this are recommendations. Y'all do get the final say, um, and it's for shirts and trophies. Um, really, what we don't call promotional, but like the mayor said, it was. It's it's legal to do it this way. Are we going one by one, or do we just go through them all? Okay. 
we got to specify, right? With the manager. We'll go one by one. Yes. Any questions or comments? No, I have the only The only concern I have with this is the amount of teams that are coming here. And if they're non local, and if they're out of town, with the shape of the fields that are here in Tupin Bay, there is no interest to come here and play on a, on a field in that shape. So, I mean, I've played softball all my life. Um, we've tried to have uh, tournaments here. The, the shape of the fields, there, there's just no interest here. And you can go play on a turf field. You can um, go to Clovis, you can go to Santa Rosa. Tomb Carey just doesn't have it here. Um, the school's being in charge of this thing now. No telling what kind of money in the future they'll get to uh, bring that softball field up. But in the situation it is now, I think uh, the Little League is using it now for the 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. And it's in terrible shape and it's embarrassing to even play on. So um, I think if they do, and I think in the past they've had one day tournaments, and it's nothing that people are really spending the night, um, to be honest. So. I've got a couple of questions, but uh, can you answer the questions on, on how many days and how many teams that they're looking at? I believe he he was going to do two days, um, and the farthest one was for Talis. And I made the comment if we could do, and I don't know if this would be fair for them or not, but for anybody that travels, have them do the late game and have them come back to early game so they would have to stay. But I and I told them in the meeting. I said we need more out of town teams. But and, and the next question to you, Commissioner, is which field are they going to play on? They're not the old your old field. It with you. is um, yeah. It's owned by the schools now, so they. they but it's the older field. Yeah, it's, it's the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt, do you know? I read in here somewhere that we gave them twenty. What was it? Twenty eight. 100 last year, 2400, something like that. Um, Do we know the amount of teams that came to that tournament? And uh, what beyond, I'd rather not say because I'm not positive, but I think most of them were from here in town. Uh, but I don't have the list, so I don't want to let's speak out of turn. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm all for having stuff for two from carry, but getting the amount of money from the lodger's tax, I mean, what's the main thing that it is for? I mean, heads and beds. We, we need people to get into the motels and uh, spend the night. Um, I mean, I, I love that they're throwing this on, but also where is the entry fee going to? I mean, if you collect either 150 per team, you get six teams. Ain't that enough for uh, trophies and everything else? I, I, I don't know. I, if, if he's not here, I guess we can't answer the questions. But yeah, I'd rather not answer questions yeah. for him. Um, but it's, it's, um, I don't know. But those are legit questions. Commissioner, would you rather get some of these questions answered before you make a decision? Uh, I would say, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, we can have a motion to table just and then go on. I mean, I think about the whole list. I think Solson's the only one that came here to uh, kind of explain her, her side of things. So, um, yeah. So, are we ta uh, are y'all tabling everything or just no? No, no, no. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. I was wondering if I could go see that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I believe on, uh, on Main Street. She was going to send you guys an email. Did you guys get an email from yes, her? Yes. Because she couldn't be here tonight because it's her regular board meeting. But she told me that she was going to send you guys an email. So you're missing the board meeting? Yes. Okay. To us? Maybe, yes. We both are. We both are. Turn the way, turn the way. So uh, I'll accept the motion to the table because the clerk would like us to vote on it. And then we need to designate somebody to get some information for us, either the chair of the largest tax or the manager. Uh, I would request the manager. <laughs> but it, it, whatever I'm asked to do, I will be happy to do, sir. 
<coughs> so I'm kind of confused. What, what are we doing now? You're you're going to table this full screw. I'll, I'll make the motion that we table the full screw that's floating in the other. Thank you. I'm sorry. And, and what is the manager supposed to do? What I'm going to get the information that Commissioner Oglesby was wanting to know. How many oh, okay. teams were here last year? And get some more history on it. Thank you. We have a motion. I'll second. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Rita? Yes. The next thing on your list is a Mesa Land Spring Concert. Uh, we They requested 13000 Audrey Stacks requested that uh, zero. Um, but I mean, but to, and I'm kind of jumping, but we, we did support the Mesa Lands Dinosaur Museum and the Fall Rodeo, but I don't know if I should jump. Uh, uh, the thing about the spring concert, if, so Mr. Van Norris, did the Mesa Lands come? For the last concert they had, did they give their final report on that one? No, and they have, we discussed that in our meeting, they have 90 days. Okay. There was some discussion, 60 or 90, and mm -hmm. I think we read the the rules, and they have 90, 90 days. Um, we did leave it open for them to come ask later um, for it, but I think there's a board member Al Patel was always off-season events. That's why we did the rodeo because it's off-season off, off season events to put heads and beds and not in the summertime. Okay, so I'm looking at this right. The Mason Last Spring concert, you guys didn't recommend. We did not recommend okay. it. So you all had the that. final say on that. If they didn't recommend that, I believe, honor their. You can either make a motion not to or no motions. You want it? You want a negative? One way or the other. Then there's no question. Okay. Here. Okay. I got overridden. Sorry. We refer to minutes a lot in a year when we're trying to figure out what they received this year. So. So the thirteen thousand dollars is pretty much all promotion. That's all they're asking for. Yeah. Put on a spring concert. They didn't have who the bands. They didn't. It was pretty vague. Um, on a possibility of, for them to have a concert at the time. So there was no executive request? Not not on the spring concert, no, sir. But if you look at their application, I'm looking at the application, it shows 7,000. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong application. Well, they, they had four. The rodeo, you, you might be looking at the rodeo. I'm not. Well, it's a no, spring concert. Oh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a time to find the budget, so Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. We had somebody there taking really good notes to put this on this matrix, on this spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, I think the spreadsheet is pretty good. I was impressed. But their question is, is that the correct amount? Yeah, if you guys look oh. at page 61 of 991, it says $13,000. Yeah, but then look at page 63. In the application, it's their breakdown on their budget under advertising plan and budget, it says 7000 and I understood it as total uh, cost of marketing would be seven thousand, and they were asking for an additional six thousand on promotion. I may be wrong on that, but that's how we came up with the thirteen. In any case, commissioners, uh, we have a larger section board, and they spend a lot of time, you know, questioning and going over this, and uh, I just feel like they didn't make a recommendation. I would feel better if it was going with the larger tax board. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's a thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so that's true. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion to not uh, allocate any money for the spring concert. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have a motion second. No call, please. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Proton Lopez? Oh, uh, yes. 
Commissioner Brito? Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie? Yes. Mesa the Lands Dinosaur Museum. Uh, this past year, uh, we funded their, I guess in 20, uh, fiscal year 24, we funded their billboards. Um, we The board felt like the, that museum brings in a lot of tourists and they stay, uh, they eat at the restaurants as, as well. Uh, there's three billboards, they asked for $16,317.68, and we recommend $17,000. The reason why we recommended more is because it was brought up, either the mayor or the manager brought up the uh, the cost of our billboards, the city's billboards, uh, they went up this year, or this past year, so their leaves might go up as well. That's why we suggested more than uh, what they asked for. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion to approve okay. the Lands Dinosaur Museum. I believe the dinosaur museum is a big asset to the community and one of the biggest attractions we have in the city. So I, I believe that if we can help contribute to that and also generate larger tax for us, that means that I'll make a motion for that. Thank you. I'll second. I have a motion and second. Roll call, please. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Fritchin Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Brito? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Uh, Mace Lands Fall Concert, we did not, rec uh, they asked for 13000 we recommended not to fund it. So we skipped in the rodeo? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, Mace Lands Fall Rodeo, uh, they bring a lot of students and stuff from out of town, uh, family, they, they put heads in beds, in our opinion. Uh, that was discussed at the meeting. Um, let's see, they requested, they requested 30. You might help me no, on this. No, they, they requested 10,700. I don't know where the 30,000 came from. Oh, wait. Maybe the total cost. Yeah, to put it's 30,500. It is 30,500. They requested. We requested seven, uh, the amount that we recommended was. Uh, Seven thousand to promote the event, and six thousand five hundred from uh, executive for the funny man. Um, I guess it's a clown. So but that would come from executive. So, Madam Manager, on the Mason Lens uh, Fall Rodeo, in the past they've always had it funded. So, what do they want to help boost the? Uh, for the attendance, like spectators, yes. or try to get more participants in it, because if it's a college road, it's sanctioned, isn't it? And then they got to be within a school. Is that true, or can anybody? Come? No, it's within the college, whoever's in the college rodeo teams or whatever. The district. The yes, district, district are the ones that come. So this is just for reaching out further for attendance. Those are promotional, and the the funny man was. Uh, entertainment, so felt like that needed to come out of executive. And that's the cost of sixty five hundred. Yes, we put sixty five hundred down, but here it says six thousand on the breakdown. There's seventeen thousand five hundred for a raw height performance, and that went away. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. You know, they kept it up to the caliber that they had this last year, and it was phenomenal. You see all those hundred thousand dollar trucks everywhere, but if it's not going to be, yeah. No, no, I think I, that's I think it will be. And they had two this last year, you know, double nights because they were filling in one, for another school. Because another school had canceled theirs, so they kept them here an extra day and had two videos. Yeah. So do we want to approve or deny? We approved seven thousand for uh, promotion and sixty five hundred for executive. So you're saying seven thousand for executive? No. No. Promotion. Seven thousand for promotional and sixty five hundred from executive. If we could, I'd really like to see if we can really look at kind of 
top a little bit on the rodeo and maybe adding a little bit to the foundry for the bronze yeah. thing because that wasn't done and they bring a lot of participants for that and people from all over the world but again it's just discussion if you guys feel that you can move to approve, approve or deny or take What, what is the largest tax on the foundry? What uh, if I remember right, and my own manager was at the meeting and the clerk was there, but I, I guess it was our job to remember. Um, if, I excuse me, Mr. Chair. I can answer uh, that. And you were just saying, uh, this is something they've done every year, in one or two years. I think they're in COVID, they quit doing uh, it. With COVID or whatever. But but that's they, they do that every year. They bring a staff to do that, and they uh, have instructors come in, and then the students are either students here or outside students. They do pay. We, we, I, I, if I re recall the Mesa Lens, they didn't bring a lot of outside people. I mean, it's a good event. I mean, I've been there. It's it's a wonderful event. But if I remember right, I think the concern was not a lot of outside. Heads and beds. Do y'all recall that? I think what it was is remember because you guys told them at one point that they could come back. Yes, we and did. And present it again to see if there could be funding then because right now it's scheduled for May 20th of 24. So that's this physical year. They weren't sure on the date for next year. Right now? Right. And then again, I bring up Mr. Patel in our lodger stacks. He likes off season events. And I think he knows what he's talking about. So this is another event that we'll have to find out in 24 budget. Right. My, my only concern is, is on the executive side is that we're going to have a lot of stuff that's going to need to be upgraded at the convention center or something. So I'd like to really strictly stick to promotional because that's what we need to do. We want to spend. That's just me for discussion. Um, Excuse me. The, anything for the convention center for operation and maintenance in, in the building usually comes out of promotional. Is that correct? It, I believe because the statute allows that. Okay, but we don't have a budget for exactly for this next year of the lottery tax, right? Which is estimating what? Yeah, it's an estimate. <coughs> yes. I'm just looking for the hundred year celebration, you know, making sure that we have stuff that we can use. So I think it's just for discussion for the board. What are what's inside? Well I think we pay this larger check board a lot of money to make recommendations. And I kind of I get paid double this year than I did last year. Yes. So the capital improvements come out of executive that goes to okay and this one to that and then uh out of promotional that's operation and maintenance comes out of promotional um, mrs hales did you want to move forward or something with that one on the rodeo or and i don't want to hold you up for no, no i i was going to move forward with the recommendation of the lockers tax but i mean I think it's valid points. <clears throat> and I believe that so you left that. We jumped around. Are we still on the rodeo? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the only reason why I brought confusion, Mayor, is that they're recommending executive and then also recommending yes. promotion. And all I was just asking for discussion is if we can maybe cut executive out and leave promotion and maybe from add that executive allocation to the foundry promotion because they didn't get nothing awarded there okay so probably what you'd want to do then is a table or whatever until we get more information from the school so wait. all right so you we're talking physical year 25 okay so this request here would come out of physical year 24. Oh. they're not does that make sense okay. mm -hmm. does that make sense for no. the iron port and i believe they left that open to them that to come back and present right physical year we, we did we left we left physical year 25 they still didn't have a date 
<coughs> they haven't had it in so long that I think they're trying to see what it's going to come back as now in May. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I, I think she answered it. Does that make sense? No. Makes sense. So I believe even though the funding's not showing here, this is for physical year 25. Okay, I'm sorry. So the Mesa Lands Rodeo is a request for physical year 25 with the recommendation of 7,000 for promotional and 6,500 from executive. The iron core that they applied for should be coming out of fiscal year 24. And I think their application, it was all in promotional and yeah. large tax board. We, we broke it out. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll second. Thank you, Robo, please. And so again, for point of clarification, seven thousand dollars out of from a, a promotional, sixty-five hundred dollars from executive. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Mayor Cherry. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez. Yes. Commissioner Pico. Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie. Yes. Commissioner Hayes. Yes. And for the record. I'm not the secretary for water staff. This is for my information. So if I make some mistakes, sorry. Oh, I I, I, I do like the this. The secretary's job on water staff to keep track of the dollar amounts. Yeah. I just felt like the manager is helping you present. So if, if anything is. Yeah, anything is useful. I appreciate it too. Uh, the Maceland Fall concert. Uh, they asked for 13000 Their application, we felt, was pretty vague. They didn't have. Uh, any they didn't have any like bands or anybody in mind and also uh there was a couple of events that were kind of around the same time like fired up or something um that was mentioned as well so no recommendation no recommendation mr mayor go ahead and make a motion to go with the recommendation of the lot of tax with no recommendation for the fall concert thank you have a motion second and second, all please. Mayor Pertin Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Rico? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. The iron pour, we did not recommend. Uh, that will come out of this budget, right? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make a motion to go with the recommendation for the Mason Lens Iron Pour with no funding. Okay, hold on, guys. Thank you. We have a motion. I'll second. And a second. Okay. Give me just a second. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez and Commissioner Rico. Okay. Commissioner Rico? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Uh, the Tomb Carry Main Street, they do the Fired Up every year. We felt like it's a good event. They advertise to get people here. Um, this is the most they've asked for in the past. Uh, we recommended the 10,200 is what the largest tax recommended. And on their application, it is worded out um, what they asked for in the past. Um, and also, I make a comment that Main Street and the Rand Reunion, what, what it's worth, they do the best reports um, at the end, end of the projects. I mean, if that means anything to y'all. I'll make a motion that Captain Carey Main Street be awarded funding. I'll second. For the amount recommended? Yes, for the amount recommended. $10,200. Correct. Correct. All right. Uh, Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Brito? Yes. The Rather Reunion, uh, they asked for $16,055. This is the most they've asked for. The larger tax recommended uh, 10000 What we took off was, uh, I think, two or three billboards. It's on their application. Uh, we felt like those billboards wouldn't put heads in beds because they were all inside the city limits. So, Mr. Benworth, are we getting strict on advertising within the 50 mile radius or whatever? Is, is that uh, what on the last page of the application, it's. Uh, I think we're being fair. I don't know about strict, um, but we, we, we try. We try to follow the rules and 
was on there. There's a there's in, in kind of verified this rural areas you can kind of yeah it it's up to the discretion of uh, the governing body y'all. So um, around the union they were released we asked for this much and I know that's one of the successful events that we have in this community. The best I think. Uh, I'm not going to be on the record for that. But... <laughs> no, no, those far as events, heads on beds. Is yeah. Probably the, yes. I really would like to see that for what, what they're trying to propose for. I don't know where the other location is, um, but I'd really like to see that happen because, you know, people pass the route. And I'd like to see if there's a way we can allocate that for I think Walden right there at the convention center and one out here on uh, 54 or something. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. And by state statute, y'all have the power to do whatever y'all want. Y'all give them 20000 or $5. I mean, it's up to y'all. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to kind of amend their request for the amount, well, amend the recommendation and include that one billboard that they requested on 66. And how much is it? Is it? Uh, I'm going to okay. I'll try to do my it's research here. If you could help me out. It's no, because I'm against it. So how much is it? They should have $5,000 just to get boards. But it's a board. So, see the breakdown here. So it just says billboard. Well, I think this says. It's got the S. So I don't know if it's, if that's the price for two. So, Madam Manager, can you come back and ask for that request for that one? Additional billboard or later or that? Uh, yeah, they could they can come back, um, and we can recommend them coming back for that. You, whatever y'all want to do. No, leave it up to the commission. You, I, I think you you've done your due diligence. Okay. And yeah. you and the board asked the questions. You went through it, and you made a recommendation. I agree so, with you, sir. But they, sure. if they want to change it, you need more information on it. Mayor, if I could make a suggestion, maybe get that dollar amount, go ahead and approve it for an additional, maybe a billboard, and I can get that dollar amount from the Segura. No, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> Just so we won't have to bring it back before you guys. Well, I'm going to go off what the mayor says, you know, you guys do. Job. So I'll go ahead and make that recommendation for the ten thousand dollars that's recommended. Quite a lot of effort for that So we have a motion. Mm -hmm. I'll second. In a second. So a real quick discussion is on it. I understand, and then you know how I feel about the Rattler reunion. Anyway, they did increase. And, and these guys spent a lot of, or these people will spend a lot of time on that. And uh, let them do a little bit more due diligence on, them, on the advertising. You know, for this year. So, I, 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 I believe the amount that we spent before, per dollar amount, uh, we bought, we got our return on investment. That's, there's 6000 last year. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's a small amount, so. It's like 38 they used to ask for 7,500 and two cents to that's what I was $3,878.72 okay roll call please okay Commissioner Hayes yeah Mayor Cherry yes Mayor Fortune Lopez yes Commissioner Rico yes Commissioner Ogilvie yes okay the two carry visitor center uh they asked for 89,450 lager stacks we recommended 31,000 uh, 16,000 went to a part time employee for the visitor center, and 15,000 went to promotion. And it was based on a, a performance plan to be decided on. So, the 31,000 
15 of it is going for promotion and the other 16 is for the visitor center employee part time. Yes, sir. So they won't we, back. we funded 12,000 in, in the past two years for the part time, the part -time. employee and then 15,000 for the statement of work okay. or performance plan. Sorry. So, Mr. Mayor, you, you just brought up something about a performance plan. Can you explain a little bit more of the performance plan or what's when and, and actually when we started and, and they weren't getting the funding or they were short last physical year to finish out their year, we came back the last quarter, the mayor and I recommended that we approve them some extra funding. Actually, it wasn't, wasn't the mayor then. It wasn't the mayor then. <laughs> but wasn't it an additional $10,000 so that they could make it? To finish out the to year. To finish out the physical year because they didn't have enough money to finish out the physical year. And with that, we created a plan that said what we expected them to meet, the criteria that we expected them to meet. And both the commission and the chamber board both signed off on that plan. And I could bring that in front of you guys. Yes, please. So with that being said, are we going to pay those installments monthly? Like it was in previous? So yes. Send us a bill that we yes. And we're not going to do a one on some. And they actually submit an invoice every month, right? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion to uh, approve the recommendations for the Chief Interior Chamber of Commerce, Wake County slash Visitor Center. The amount of recommendations for $31,000. I'll second. And that's going to be out of promotional, correct? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Can we pay for the salary for that? Uh, we do, or when I say we, the, uh, the promotional does pay for a salary for the, no, the uh, right museum, the mu part-time, oh. mm -hmm. so I, I guess it's legal. Mm -hmm. It's promotional because it's a visitor center. Yeah. And the statement of work is still, I think. Yeah. Yes, sir. So just for a point of clarification, what out of the thirty-one thousand will be for? I guess it's all worth it. All of it. Sixteen thousand is for the part-time. And then fifteen thousand promotion recommendation. Yes. Okay. And that's up. The, the sixteen thousand is just an increase from the twelve thousand last year, okay. and the fifteen remained the same. Got it. Okay. Madam Manager, okay. Uh, City of Timberry Equipment, ball field. We need a motion. We need a second on that. Uh, Jonathan, okay. second. Yeah. Sorry. Roll call. Mayor Cherry. Yes. Mayor Cortez Lopez. Yes. Commissioner Rico. Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie. Yes. Commissioner Hayes. Yes. Madam Clerk, would you keep up with this? Please? <laughs> Uh, City of Tim Carey Equipment uh, slash ball field. Um, they were asking for a tractor and a lawnmower. But what I understand is uh, y'all have a um, y'all are redoing the ball fields and uh, with grant money. And and I feel like or the board feels like we need to keep up those ball fields. On a personal note, my kids were playing. Uh, coach pitch yesterday, and every time we picked up the ball, it was covered with uh, stickers. So, makes them better ball players. It does, it does. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but, um, there's no catch the ball. But, yeah, uh, 30, they asked for three, uh, $35,795, and we, uh, Approved thirty five thousand eight hundred. Uh, we rounded up, I guess. Uh, I think you're getting the um, the lawnmower from locally. What I understand. Yes. And and in your packet, we did a we did uh, include the the three bids or whatever that are required for us to submit, so that you guys could see that that we did. So it, all it, the procurement. It okay. Uh, the tractor is now this. This lawnmower, and what happened is we did try to get the grant to pay for the equipment, but they denied it. They wouldn't pay for the equipment. 
So we wanted equipment that would be used for the ball field and the improvements that we're doing to the little league fields. They're going to uh, put in a bid to be able to have that week-long tournament that they have. What do they call it? Little league, yeah. It's a little district. league tournament. It's a week-long for families come. Uh, they feel like they're in the place now that they have the, the location that we are able to put it, submit a bid. There's no guarantee that we're going to get it, but at least we're in a place where we can. So we felt like it was a need for us to be able to maintain the ball fields and that more will be used, nothing but on the infield and the sod, the new sod and stuff that we're putting up. We are putting fences and barriers trying to minimize the stickers and the seeds and everything coming in. We're going with the solid metal fence on the south and the west side so that to try to minimize that from blowing in. Right, Commissioner? And so when we get, get to our artificial truck next year, they can use the motor somewhere else. <laughs> Only I, I don't know anything about the equipment. I'm going to rely on Mr. Holmes to be the Commissioner Holmes to be the kind of tell us. Um, So the grass mower is going to be for the the end part, and that's going to be purchased at Dickinson. Yes. Yeah. So my only concern is hopefully, I mean, with the season and everything going on, just for the two or three months, I hope somebody doesn't say, "Hey, my mower broke down at the deal, and I need it over here at the no. down park or something." Because oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like with this, the the water department contamination. You pick up a sticker in that mower. You go to the. You go where there's good grass. Believe me, uh, it, it's going to spread. So. And we are going to have a building and stuff that we can keep our own equipment up there, so it's yeah, not so going to have to be moved and stuff like so that. So the building, the storage is going to come with the grant. The storage is coming out of the grant, and that's that's been approved. So it's going to be on the south side, correct? Mm -hmm. He knows more about where it's going to be. Go ahead. And I'm going to go with the medical team and ask you the questions. So the second uh, is a question, and that's going to be, what is that purpose for? That's to mow the outside of the uh, outside of the field, because outside of the field, there ain't so much of uh, the kind of the grass that we're putting on the inside of the field. Um, so there's more, more weeds and stuff on the outside. So. I guess there's, we're going to be spraying for stickers, trying to kill all that with pre-emergence and all that stuff, trying to kill all that stuff off. And the biggest thing that we're going to do is block off that canal side and block all the blow into there. And I went out there the other day to see that blockage that he's putting up there. He's doing. I seen him and his wife out there doing it by themselves, which kills me. But it's just that's just a hard job to do, putting zip ties every two foot around that hole whole field so i give them so much credit for doing that i've been through all that and the work is just uh tedious but um it looks very good already i mean what a huge improvement some something little like that is and but the metal fence in the back is going to make the biggest difference i, I think and it, this really tractor is. too is also it it comes with attachments so they'll be able to aerate they'll be able to 210 attachments Oh. There's, also, there's also a box blade, yeah, there's a box blade that will level the infield yes, and not level anywhere else out that he needs level. Um, is, is that what you're going to need to write? Because you're talking about dragging. Um, I, I believe he has all the, the, the drag tools already, I believe. Um, with the infield just being the only dirt part of that, it's not that like the high school where we have the only dirt field infield in the whole state of Mexico, there actually is grass on the inside that's going to be put on the inside infield and outfield. So there's very little there. It could almost be hand drug. But leveling out the hills and, and stuff like that from overuse of base paths and stuff, that box blade will come in the room. And it, it comes with a backhoe bucket too so that we can move the infield material to where we need it because we're going to have it piled. Yeah. And, and dry pinch post also. Yeah. So, Madam Manager, is this going to come out of the budget of 2024 or 2025? 2025. Well, no, we're taking it back. 2024. 
What's a big time? I think that they they're holding it because they had two in stock and we you know when we didn't get the funding it was like we had to call them and then we called back and they still had one in stock so it, they're available nope no and that tractor for the outside there is a lot of mowing to do out there i think but uh i mean walking around out there and seeing all the, everything that needs to be mowed out there it can be done with a little mower so i think that bigger tractor is going to really help out <laughs> If nobody has anything else, um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move with this, but I'd also like to see if we can have this equipment put on our inventory list for that recreation department so it can be included in there so we know what it's moving forward, what inventory we have. In the uh, excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem, what inventory list? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh so yes, okay. yes, okay. If nobody has any other questions or comments, uh, I'd like to move with the, the funding of the uh, city of Tucumcari carry equipment ball field uh, with a recommendation amount of 35800 uh, to come out of physical budget of 24 and for the sole purpose of the, just the ball fields. I'll second. Thank you. Roll. Oh. Mayor Terry. Yes. Mayor Bertram Lopez. Yes. Commissioner Rico. Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. Magazines, ads. Um, they, every year we do magazines for the Route 66, uh, Bread Canal. There's about four of them. And it says 10,000, but I think we we budgeted 40,000 for this. And we met, I don't mayor, our manager. No, I believe that what I presented to you guys, there was two contracts that were, that I had already received. And if one of them was brick and elm for a total of uh, American Road was 9,600, and there is a slight increase. And brick and elm is $7,425. So, what is that? So, that alone's already over 10,000. Right. Well, I, I think we allocated 40,000 because you said, well, we saw this one and this one. And I said, well, 40,000 do it. And you said, yes, I thought. I haven't gotten the rest of the ones from the other, and we've always paid for them. We've always paid. They designed the ads, but the city's always incorporated. This last year, when we didn't have a marketing firm, I felt like we still needed to keep our presence in all of these magazines. There's one out of Arizona. Uh, Brick and Elm is out of Amarillo. Uh, American Road, Route 66. No. The Ralph magazine. What about the rack cards? Uh, the rack cards, I've got plenty for the next <laughs> few years. Okay. We are working on, uh, that's what I didn't have on the agenda, the approval for the visitor card. Simmons card. Well, you didn't. It was I'm sorry, I was at that meeting that they made, a, made the recommendation, but they, I must have been out have a copy. What else was? Did you say visitor's guide? Mm -hmm. I did. Elgin okay. marketing quote for visitor's guide? Okay, it's the last one. Okay. All right. So the magazines is we're just wanting to continue that ads. So what what amount do we recommend then? We recommended forty because we thought that would be more than enough. Um because we had two magazines for seven. 19,000 or 17,000 and I think the manager said the one of the ones that we're missing was kind of expensive so Madam Clerk do you have a anything to kind of we can go off of last year yeah. I can would that be good to go off of what last year's recommendation or So in physical year 23, it was $32,152. So would you be safe to say that or go up to 35 or? I would actually go with the 40,000 that he's saying. You might have to go to Hawaii and pick these mag magazines up. <laughs> There's that in my office. <laughs> I'll make a recommendation that would be go with the largest check. Board's recommendation 40,000. 
advertising for the city. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Brito? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Hales? Yes. Mayor Chair? Yes. I guess the visitor guides, uh, I, I wasn't on this, but we did approve the visitor guides. Um, the visitor guides is something that uh, was done a couple years ago. Um, and I think we ran out and we needed to add some more businesses. Or and it has really been a battle to be able to find a company that we could go with the visitor guides. Uh, this is a project Diane has worked on for how many months then? Oh, almost since I started. <laughs> almost since she started. What happened was the the marketing company that we had previously had printed and got these visitor guides, and there was changes that needed to be updated. So Diane went through and did the upgrades, and then we sent it to the print company. They wouldn't accept the resolution. They said the res the quality of the resolution wasn't good enough for them to print. So then the file was corrupt, and we had to we couldn't get the same. Uh, they were using a different program than what we than what the city was able to use. So it's just been a battle the whole time. We finally found a marketing company that would do the visitor guides with all the all my changes that they have gone through and corrected, and we're ready to go to printing. And it's a total of seven thousand. Oh, I don't have that in front of me. Yeah. yeah. Seven thousand two hundred and some odd dollars. I I, I can't quote. Oh, it's in here. Seven thousand two sixty two. Seven thousand. And that's for five thousand copies. That's for five thousand copies, and we actually look different places. They look. Uh, the Vista Print. Vista Print. And there was another company by the name of Slate. So it's, it's been a battle to get them. Everybody's asking for the visitor guides. I don't think that next year we'll need wrap cards, but I believe that visitor guides, the way they went through them. And that was Elliot Marketing that you did that with? Yes, yes. But that's who we finally got to, to get the printing done. So they're just waiting for RPO if, if it's approved to get them printed. So I would ask for approval to for the forty thousand. No, for the seven thousand two hundred and sixty-two oh nine to get the air. To get the <laughs> here's the last last page of the presentation of the deals. If you look at the very last page. Oh yeah. So one ninety one. Yes. One ninety one. So I would ask that you guys. <laughs> approve this for us to purchase the visitor guide so we can get moving on, on so we're going to get five thousand city visitor guides right yes okay. mr mayor i'd like to make a motion to get the visitor five thousand uh visitor guides for seven thousand two hundred sixty two and nine cents second i have a motion and a second roll call please second <laughs> commissioner Vigo? yes commissioner Oglesby. yes commissioner hales yes mayor cherry Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez. Yes. See, there you have one more. Oh, okay. So the next thing that we have on, and I'm kind of going back in order, go to page 181 and the wayfinding. And then did you wonder why I'm confused? I know, I'm sorry. Right. It's not in order. <coughs> it was just overlooked. <coughs> Mayor. 181? Oh, okay. page 181. So what I attached in your, in your, um, uh, book in your commission books this was a breakdown of physical year 23 i just wanted to show you and i highlighted it in it looks like in pink that shows that they did uh put twenty thousand dollars or it was part of the expenditures for that physical year 23. what we did wrong when going forward to physical year 24 is i didn't carry over that encumbrance of that twenty thousand dollars i can't say that it wasn't done because in the budget there's like 187,000 of community events i couldn't find the breakdown of what was approved for physical year 24 but i'm asking that we approve the 20,000 
for wayfinding. So, so are you asking for twenty thousand or twenty one thousand seven hundred eleven dollars? Twenty thousand. Just twenty thousand. You're gonna pay the tax. So that's right. what we approved was a twenty thousand. Uh, y'all get the final say if y'all want to do that other thousand. But uh, the largest tax approved the twenty thousand. Um, I was actually uh, probably the one that's throwing a fit that, the lot in my opinion, that it wasn't it wasn't presented in the commission. Uh, but the point of the 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 concept of way signs, I think, would be a good asset for the city. And I think uh, the board agreed also. The concept or the wayfinder? The wayfinder, whatever. It, it it was approved. It was a good idea. Um, what I did is I watched that video, the YouTube video that they put on a couple Mondays ago. And I thought it was a good. But with all respect, Mr. Benos, if you don't mind stepping aside, I think the call is calling Yeah, that's fine. When did I lose control here? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, can we have that? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. So, Carly, right, thank you for coming up. But I, I, I too did watch that video too, and I think this is would be a great asset for you can carry. The only thing that I'm puzzled on. So, the twenty thousand that we're going to match is just going to be for the engineering, I guess, or the design, or what? What? If I understand, this is for a plan a to plan. create. Yeah, you have to have a plan in place to go out and actually purchase the sign. You can't just go to a company and say, I want this many signs. You have to have something telling them how many you want, what size it is, what the design is going to look like, what colors you want. Um, and so this is to create that plan. And then we'll have to come back and approve the purchase of Then the we signs. start looking for um, funding for the signs. So if I understood it right from the meeting, this is not going to particularly point out to one just business. It's just going to kind of go to that. It will point to no businesses specifically. It will be like the convention center, the museums. Um, what we did recommend was lodging, dining, shopping, those types of words. That way it's not pointing to a specific business. It's just um, in general. It's guiding people where they can go within the city. And they, it's a plan to make a unique sign that's just for to compare. You know, something that catching that it's like, oh, that's to compare. So, well, it kind of kind of go to all our medical facilities and stuff like that, kind of direct it to that, like that. That was brought up. We have included the hospital. Um, and then for like down here, we, we called it the municipal complex instead of saying city hall, fire department, police department. Um, I think they there's already, um, for like the Presbyterian Medical Clinic, there's already some signage out there. We recommended that that be kept. Um, instead of changing it over to Tucum Carries because it's not really Tucum Carry, um, and the signage was already there and it's fairly new, so those won't be replaced. But the hospital will be included on so signage. Like golf course and stuff. Golf like that. course, um, Five Mile Park. We won't forget about this golf right? And we're gonna spell it right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had Yeah. Go ahead. I have a question. You see, I'm getting ready to go home. I'd like to move forward with the recommendation of the $20,000 for our wayfinding for the second. Okay. Uh, just a real quick discussion, and we'll get a signed contract this time, right? Yes. I was going to ask if, if the mayor could sign the contract. Could it be for $20,000 or could it be $21,000? And, and kind of what it is is it's the twenty thousand. The one thousand uh, five hundred and fifty dollars is the New Mexico ghost receipts tax. That I, that would be up to y'all. That's on the so the way this is set up is this is a partnership between Main Street and the city. Main Street's portion of everything is being funded through New Mexico Main Street, and then the city. So the company discounted what the cost was going to be for the city's portion of it because we're doing it at the same time. So the, I guess there probably is tax owed on the city's portion of it. So I understood you, you're all right. You're sure. Did it half and half or no? I think that's exactly correct, yes, half and half. They're paying 20, we're paying 20. Correct. Yeah. And I think that's even still discounted pretty steeply um, for I the city. I can't believe the expense in it. Really, yeah, really can't. I can't believe the expense in any plan that you have to do. Go ahead. 
And I, I would I would ask for the 21 because that includes the ticker receipt tax. So the 21711? Yes, the 21. Or the 215. 215, 515. Commissioner Hales, you Yeah, I would like to amend my motion. Thank you. 215, 515. Has somebody already seconded? Roll call, please. Commissioner Oglesby? Yeah. Commissioner Hales? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Brito? Yes. Thank you. And I just wanted to add one thing. So once we do have um, those recommendations, I think they're planning on bringing some sign um, designs, some kind of preliminary designs. But that final stuff will come to the commission before approval, before um, anything is accepted for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do, you, do you need a projected session? On the property. Okay. So. <clears throat> At a session motion to move into the next session for discussion of the sale or purchase of property and uh, creditor in the fleet. Commissioner Hales? Yes. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Yes. Commissioner Rico? Yes. Commissioner Ogilvie? Yes.
accept the motion to come out of executive session. The only thing discussed was limited personnel, or no. I'll get it right here in a minute. Threatened or pending legal action and uh, purchase acquisition or lease of real property. No decisions were made. Uh, so, Roll call, please. Mayor Cherry? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Lopez? Yes. Commissioner Vito? Yes. Commissioner Robusti? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Yes. City Manager's quick report. Yeah, on, on the street lights, you know, I had told you guys last time that they would be here this week or they got sick. So they'll be here the first of next week. Uh, they're going to be working. Part of the crew will be working on the lights, and then the other crew is going to be looking at the brakes, focused on the boulevard where the the cables are broke or where there's an issue with the breakage. And uh, we're expecting to get fixtures, additional fixtures, uh, for the first street, south of first street. They have to get some more fixtures. And uh, those should be in this week. Uh, and they're waiting for the, the new services have already been inspected they just need to get them tied in and stuff so they're hoping to get that done uh the funding for physical year 24 is already running really low through the dot but uh they would look at funding us again in physical year 25. so we might not be able to get all the lights done now by the end of june but then come physical year 25 they would give us additional funding for, us the to for the boulevard and the lights. But they're looking at already if they issue the PO, then we know that it's already encumbered, so we're going to get that money. So that's going to kind of be what I push for. So uh, we did have our pre bid meetings on the reuse in the KOA project. Uh, we had that last week. Um, there was some addendums that he needed to work on. Some of it was that they didn't have right to right federal wage breakdown and there was a couple of other things but we we're going to handle it through addendum so they're working on that the koa bid will close on april 18th and the reuse will close on may 7th uh, the recreation abatement is continuing uh, we're thinking that they'll be completed within the next couple of weeks construction on the gym is in progress and uh they're continuing now they're since they've out of the rec center, and the rec's not going to be closed for half the summer. We're hoping that we'll be able to get the renovations and stuff done as soon as we can. But, but it's closed now. It's closed now, yes. And uh, the swimming pool, we'll have the swimming pool, might not have the rec center, but we'll have the swimming pool. We are going to advertise for lifeguards. Uh, and so we've got that going, and they're starting to do the inside. So the rec center, employees are now working on the fields and on the on the swimming pool updating fixtures painting and doing all that kind of stuff so we're working on that uh i do want to say that it was brought to my attention today uh that in part of one of the fields and i can't tell you what bill it was that the governor signed there was an extension to spend that two million dollars till june of 2025. really but you know we, we're really pushing so some of the things that might not come in by the end of june one of the deals was the oh let me call and see my mind goes for, that, huh? for the poor no for the rec for, for, the, rec, the, for rec. the rec center the goals oh yeah those weren't going to be able to come in until october remember so that was an issue at the features and the goals so those weren't going to be able so now we can go back and look to see you know, we don't have as much left now. We just have like 188,000 left oh, is wow. what we have. But looking at what we still can get and kind of prioritized kind of what we thought was needed. Uh, but the goals and the features were one of the first things. Um, the lighting may be out at the, at the ball fields, you know, at the little league fields. Um, Are you putting AC? Yes. And that's. Will be done by July first. Yes. So, uh, how do I on the little? Are we updating the uh, sprinkler system? 
Uh, I don't think so. They're going to put in the sod with the existing. Whoever's installing the sod will make sure that the sprinkler heads are where they need to be installed. Adjusted. Adjusted and everything. That's a new sprinkler system, right? From my understanding, yes. that's yes. It's never summer. been used yet. Uh, yeah. Yes, they're starting to turn it on now. Okay. You can tell it's ringing up. Yeah, yeah. last uh, summer, the YCC. Yeah. That was one of their projects. So, uh, so there's a possibility that we would have been, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that till now. You know, so it wouldn't have been good for us to sit back and then. Because we kept on asking, and they kept on saying, "No, we have to do it by unit." And all of a sudden, yeah. So we found out. So I did travel to Albuquerque and Santa Fe yesterday to meet with the the EDDC Secretary Mark Rover. Uh, that was a very good meeting. Um, in Santa Fe, we did, uh, I had done an IFRA request for records so that we could look for records that we couldn't find here on violations that the city has had since 2011, since they started working on that. So that was very good. That was a good meeting too. And met the engineers there, so that was very successful. Uh, I do want to remind you guys that I still need to schedule the uh, I want to remind you guys for the land, for the landfill in May. Uh, so what if you guys have any trips or anything in May or something that you're going to hey, be done? So that I know when not to schedule. Okay. Uh, our parks department has been out mowing and uh, I believe they're starting their watering or they're going to start watering here pretty quick. Uh, we are starting to work on the watering, the leaf on the north, on the park on the north side. So we're addressing that so that we can get that watering up and going again. Uh, I did not meet with Governor Grisham, but I did talk to her staff about what we were needing. And uh, Diego is, before we meet with the governor, he's kind of telling me what direction or where we can go to, to see about funding and stuff like that. So I'm working with Diego on that. Our Cinco de Mayo activities are all scheduled. Uh, posters will be completed this week. Tickets will be available by the end of the week. Uh, so anyone interested in purchasing the tickets, they can call City Hall at 461-3451, extension 1. You can go by Mesa Lands during the week or the Chamber of Commerce from Friday through Monday. So on the weekend, you can still purchase tickets. You can go by the Chamber to pick up tickets. Uh, we are also meeting uh, weekly on this activity and continue to do so. Is there anything you want to add, Jonathan? So, uh, on our Aver edition, uh, the paving has completed. Uh, we still need to do some work on Laughlin, and they're working on the punch list. So, we'll post on that one. Uh, we did have our comprehensive public meeting last week. Uh, thank all of those people who participated in that. Uh, I'm excited to see this project moving forward, and I keep stressing that I want a plan that's usable that the city is going to use for the future and not just a plan because we need it for grants and it's going to sit on the shelf. I want I want a working plan. And that's all that I have for now. Oh, I also do want to say that the rabies clinic is scheduled. It's scheduled for May 4th. Four. Four. <laughs> from 9 to 12 and then 1 to 4. Okay. So and it will be at the water warehouse. Is the vet doing that? Yes. Dr. Tompkins. Dr. Tompkins okay. is doing here. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, and we got the fee to $15. $15. And the city will be there to sell licenses and stuff too. So we'll be there too. That's all I have now. I'm open for questions. Okay. Oh, question. Go right ahead. Uh, Madam Manager, on the, uh, you mentioned the Aver edition on the punch list. Um, the milling on Laughlin. It's not done yet. Okay. And so that, they just milled the, the 10 hundred, so they still got to do the 11 hundred? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's still not done. And what are they going to do then? Just mill it up. And then we're going to use some of the funding from the capital outlay funding to get those streets. Chips to um, the next thing you mentioned the uh, the parks and stuff like that. Um, so you're saying that we're going to start probably getting sprinkler systems repaired and stuff like that. Yes. Um, just one thing to add to uh, the Northside Park um, over the Easter holiday, 
I guess they had a little hunt out there. Um, a little child tripped over the black paper there, busted up his lip. Grandmother didn't know what to do. I said, well, uh, we did take care of it. Okay. Uh, he's already left. Mr. Mr. Yulberry. Yulberry called. And we did. We went that, that same day that he called us. We went out there and we mowed and took care of the, the plastic. And stuff. Okay. So yeah, I just didn't know if there's something that we can do, just remove it completely. And we, and we, get, we have been pricing, you know, because we're trying to get the material that goes under the, the deal. And they've told me to go look to see what the school has on some of their, under their equipment. Uh, for that one park alone, was going to be like seven to eight thousand dollars. Her part to put the material to put underneath. So, so moving forward with that poly life credit, is it something that we can put in for next year for yes. price for um, that, our that parks? was the exciting part that if we could get it spent that we go back and look at other projects that we want. You know, there's you know we talked about a second gym at the rec center that would be beneficial. Uh Commissioner Ogles, we talked about an outdoor basketball court, uh, playground equipment or something out there so that you know, sometimes the little kids get tired of just sitting watching sports or whatever they could go out and play in the playground or something. Uh, talked about, I would like equipment for our parks. Yes, that's right. I would like to look at equipment for our parks and see what else we need at the ball field or what else we can do to improve things. So will that quality life grant would it will allow us to be able to purchase equipment for the area of parks room? Yes, it's it how we write it in the grant. Okay. That's the only thing that kept us from like the equipment is how the grant was written. Okay. So it depends on how we write the grant, but those are all things that we would look for. Okay. Well, I just wonder if we can modernize now our, you know, our park equipment. I know that it's pretty much dated. And, and, can... and it's, it's, uh, in almost all our parks, all we have is swings. You know, it's pretty much, I think in the majority of our parks, it's all, probably all we have now is swings. So to be able to upgrade them too, I think would be really nice. But yes, that's something that I would like to do. Okay, that's all I have here. So just to go a little bit further, I think we should have some input on that. We've never had, all of a sudden we would have known that we applied for it and received a grant. Well, I think the- Deadlines. Deadlines has been an issue. And I think they changed the deadline from the year before. I think the original, it went in in October or something. That's when they applied for the money for the swimming pool. And it was the last minute deal we put in for the right. swimming pool, got that money. This year, they had changed the date. So the earlier. suggestion is, and I concur, is, is, is we, recommendations. Yeah, we've got some good rec people on here. That <laughs> and, and I think the rec board, uh, I do want to say they are starting their meetings this week. You know, recommendations from them too, I think is, is something because uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just parks and stuff too, right? You could look at walking trails, you could look at a bike trail, you know, ways to improve the disc golf, you know. There's other things that we can look at too under the recreation. So real quick, Madam Manager, um, you know, we're getting to the spring weather now, April, and uh, outdoor classroom is going to start probably being utilized for area schools. Are we going to be able to get that kind of up to par yes. before? I, I, I have a question. So for the, you mentioned something about the park equipment, the playground equipment stuff. Couldn't you utilize YCC grants? Couldn't the YCC grants be used for that? They used to. Mm -hmm. uh, the YCC grant almost all goes to wages. There's just a little percentage, but they did. Like but they're the doing the parks this year on that grant. We just did it in the parks. The YCC? Yes. Yes. They have it broke down on their projects. They have to, and it's, we've already been approved. But yes, right. they used to do that previously. The difference is is the amount um, of money that we get now and the cost. The cost of playground equipment is unreal. Yeah. But but yes, um, like they've done like gazebos and stuff like that on the north side park, you know, in the past. So that was your comments. This question. Questions from the manager. Okay, do you have comments? No comments. Okay. <laughs> I think we <laughs> Commissioner Oak was very damn many comments. Um, I have a couple. Um, I just want to express to the community of the citizen of Tim Terry, Rec Center, I mean, has to be shut down at a certain time to 
if anybody's seen the inside of that place, I mean, come on, we got to shut it down no matter what. I mean, no matter what, when it is or when it is, but the improvements are going to be just immaculate in there, I think. And it, from my understanding, is the court going to be done too with all this yes. closing and everything? They're currently they're using little grinders to take the plaster off the walls. They yeah. already got it. And they're like little grinders and they're using scissor lifts. So they've been there like a week. They're like halfway down on right. one of the walls from top to bottom of grinding down that the plaster. So they're going to get re-plastered. We're getting a new floor. Yeah, yeah so it's be really very nice. beneficial, I think. <clears throat> I think um, you personally have kept up with this. I missed a couple meetings, but uh, I, I appreciate you just keeping up on it and making sure everything is following through with that. Um, the address 1623 South 7th. Um, have we came up with a solution about that? Um, now there's a van living. It was in the alley. It's told me you had to get it. He parked in the alley. Told him, hey, man, camera's going off. You need to move. Um, now he's in the driveway of this place. I don't know. He doesn't, he won't speak to me, but now he's parking again there at night, sleeping in the driveway. So, um, um, and also the 1800 block, that empty lot where non commercial, uh, non commercial lot, are we, I mean, is that taken care of? Are we, yes, of 7th Street. Yes, yes, uh, yes, um. Correspondence has been mailed out, so we're in, we're moving forward. Awesome. Okay. Cool. And lastly, I I, I just want to I really want to express my support for uh, Pro Tem Mayor Lopez. I mean, if anybody knows this man, I've known this man since I was a kid, and uh, the guy is passionate about the city. I mean, this guy will he will do anything for the city. And I think it was a little mix up with everything, but the guy means means well. And I think that without him on this board, I think the board is half of what it could it could be. I mean, the guy is really important to the city. His heart's in it. Um, from from my for me, I wouldn't be driven without the guy. So maybe there was a mix up, you know, whatever. Let's get past it. I think we have a wonderful board here. I think we could, you know, do some things. I think we're all headed in the right direction. Our minds are in it. But this guy's been through a lot, too. I mean, his house was shot at. I mean, his family was affected. He went through a lot, too. Did we all check on him? No. I mean, uh, but uh, I think we're past everything. I hope we are. But we need to move forward. And uh, uh, I think we've learned a lot from this whole mix-up. So, um I just got him back 100%. And without him here, I don't know if I'd be here. So um, so I just want to you know, voice my uh, support for Pote Mayor Lopez. And uh, I think that's all I got. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Brito. I think Mr. Alan Dougherty, I thought, was the line for, uh, with the circus coming in next Tuesday. And then Cinco de Mayo, if they come to, we're on the corner. Just keep in mind on those. And that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Really? <laughs> okay, you're right. Um, so there, on Main Street and the 500 block, there's this tree. It looks like it's about to come down at any time. It's in between the curb and the sidewalk in front of the house that had burnt. So. I, it's not a matter of if the more of when that tree's going to come down and most likely on the vehicle. So, I mean, I travel that route at least four times a day. So, I, I'm, that's just a concern. Did yeah. I have on the north side? On the north side. Mm -hmm. And then um, also on um, the work sessions, if we could at least have two working items, I mean, this is just a recommendation on there. So, if we finish one thing, maybe we can move into the other. So. I would like to see for myself, my priorities would be the nuisance ordinance um, and then, of course, the dog ordinance. And, and we are working on the on the animal control on the ordinance. Uh -huh. uh, the chief, myself, and Kathy McCullen, we're meeting every other week. Right. And we're almost done 
with recommendations that you know we would bring before the board so that you guys could look at it and see what you guys thought would be part of so how about the change. next work session at least started the animal control yes. or nuisance animal control, animal control. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then we um I, I would like to ask what the status is on the bounce checks for um people who had water bills that have been outstanding there's like thousands of dollars yes and uh it's it's a process <laughs> it's a process that we're working on uh actually spoke uh to see on the criminal side if we could pursue the criminal side and how we would have to go about that because we did look into i have researched on going through the normal status is that you issue a letter and then it's it's turned over to the da's office and they determine if there's criminal charges or not. If it's on that count, you can't do that. So we're looking at other avenues on how it can be done criminally if, if it's not taken care of. So it's an ongoing process of working with the attorneys and law enforcement and stuff. Have we started that process? Yes. And so we know it end when it ends or when they make a decision or whatever? They don't have that yet. Okay. Because it's, it's still communication between all of us trying to. Would there that. be any way we could get a list to see what the true dollar amount is if those checks are outstanding? Yeah, especially, I mean, my concern, of course, it is for the entire city, but more so the commercial businesses. Um, just because I'd like to, I, I know that there's thousands of dollars out there. I think it's only fair if we're going to be cutting off the water to residents that the same would be for the commercial businesses. So, and I, and I will say, can I make a statement on the commercial one? They let one of my tenants at one of my commercial properties go like sixteen hundred dollars before they turn the water off and i'm stuck with that bill which i need to take care of but we're i'm in a lawsuit with that with that person because of it so they let my bill go six it was about sixteen hundred bucks before they shut it off okay thanks on my commercial property things have changed so everybody is treating so we're not doing that anymore. So it, it is look. And and I wanted to go back not just on worthless checks, but accounts that are delinquent that are inactive. To to reach out to those people to say, you know, you have this this inactive account. We know you're not using the utilities or the water anymore, but you have this debt to the city that, you know, we're willing to work with you to take payments or whatever to move it forward. So on both sides we want to start collections on both of them. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it's fair across the board and not, no special exemptions yes. are made for no past commissioners or anybody else that's yes. that has outstanding um, checks. Um, the next thing is also um, the auditor for the forensic audit, all this stuff that we are going on because it's we're already in the 11th hour and in looking at the state auditor's website, the city of Chicken Carey has not uh, completed an audit report for 2023. And now 2024 is closing pretty quick, and we already have that's already a, a repetitive finding. Okay, so we had gotten us out of the finding when I started. <laughs> we had gotten us out of the finding, but the the one that's uh, easy that we hired to help us with it, they're going to start coming, or they're looking at coming next week. But I haven't gotten a firm date from them on when they're coming. So getting back to that, they were supposed to start within a week and it's going to take them 10 days. Yep. And that's a contract we signed, correct? Yes. So do we need to look at someone else? It It's the highest priority that I think we have right now. I spoke to them and it was this week. It was this week. It was toward the end of last week when I finally reached out to him because hey, he's been corresponding with them and stuff. So I finally called and said, hey, I really need to talk to you guys to see where we're at, what you need, or do you have everything that you need for to move forward? And they had told me it was on Thursday or Wednesday because they said, we'll get back with you because I explained that I had a commission meeting and I wanted to be able to come and give them a status of exactly where we were. I was supposed to hear back from them on Friday. I didn't. And then Monday, I was gone all day. And today's just kind of been crazy with meeting after meeting. But I'll get on that tomorrow morning. So where I can, so where I can tell you guys, 
but they did try to schedule to come this week. Uh, they wanted to come, but baby's gone to um, training, and I'm out for the week, so I said if we can schedule it for next week, that'd be better. Well, so we'll like she see. said, we are way, 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 and and number one, that's, and I didn't want to get in there, but, uh, and can and, answer, yes, go ahead. And the auditor, I, I'll reach out to him to see what we're at on that. Well, the auditor can't do the audit until we get the reconciliation. So on that end, uh, Plateau, I understand they were having trouble getting the, the CPA into the system. That Jake was trying to get the CPAs into the Tyler system. Into the Tyler system. Yes. Is that what as I far as I know, but they're, they've got access. Though. Okay. They've got access, and um, they've got access to bank statements and stuff. So okay. Got all that done. Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. Um, just two more things. <laughs> Sorry. So on the street signs, um, is there any any update with POT on the, the replacement of the ones that we already have there? No. Yeah. No. I think that we need to work with them with POT on the signs, with kind of the wayfinding thing. So that we're not duplicating right. signs. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? But like the big signs that are out on the interstate, I know the one you're talking about is right off the interstate over First Street. Right. That whole sign is laying on the ground. Yeah. That one's blown over. Those kind of signs that say mileage or whatever, right. those we need to push okay. to get them fixed. Okay. And even coming from Albuquerque, some of them are brown and yeah they are very good condition yes. so I just think those it, kinds of signs all look okay. at okay yeah, just because I, I feel like it, it just reflects poorly on the city and i guess and now you can see them with your lights <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> even more so so okay. and then um lastly um just um you know i, I had a uh, call from from a resident about the nuisance officer um writing citations stating that it was under the direction of the commissioners um, that why she was writing the citations. Like I mentioned earlier, I had never at one point in time made any comments so about they, that. Did they state that on the citation or verbally just stating it? I believe it was written on the citation. And on the citation go. it was written that she has a boss right who has a boss. Yeah. She wrote She, yeah, she wrote that. We'll get you. She's the one that gave it. Gosh, thank you. You know, I've been going through here checking off my thank you. Nope, sorry. No problem. So I, I want to say this again. You know, we're going to talk about looking at ordinances again. Enforce the ordinance that we have, please. And after all this, uh, we talked about the animal. You want to check what kind of insurance do we have to the volunteers, our fighters? Do you know? Okay. I, I'd like I'll get that. that to you. And, and, and another thing, uh, I sure like to see the last. Two hybrid tests that, that you have. I need to get the other one. I got you one of them. I need to get the other one. Yes, please. Yeah, the other one's kind of not. Well, they did a partial one. And I forget what year you gave me, but there should be two from Waterway and then a partial they did with another company. Okay, so please. I need another one from Waterway. Yes. You know which one I gave you? No, ma'am, but I will text you or text me the email the, the dates on, okay. on it. So I think that's all I have, except uh, Commissioner Ogilvy, I agree with you entirely about our commission and about uh, Commissioner Ogilvy. Thank you. Uh, real quick, Mayor. Um, again, thank you, Mr. Ogilvy, and, and the commission, too. Uh, I appreciate it. And, uh, I am passionate about this community. And, Maybe it was kind of taken out of context, but um, hopefully moving forward, we can continue to work for the better of the two-pin But uh, Madam Manager, um, I did want to bring this up to you. Um, 
I had a resident on Quay Road 634194 said he's called in several times regarding his meter. He says he's having problems with his meter on below, that it's rotted out. Um, uh, so I went out there to go look at it. Um, all he's just asking is if, if it can be replaced because I guess there's consumption going through there and he's making notices that there's high consumption. Um, so if we can just send uh, 4194 um, and I can also give you that name after your Excuse me. Quite 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 63. Uh, same right. And then that's all I have. Anything else from anyone? We are adjourned early. Yeah, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, <I'm pretty> <laughs>